Transmission of electricity can happen using two methods. The first one is high voltage alternating current transmission or HVAC, the most commonly used methodology. The second one is high voltage direct current HVDC, the most efficient one. In this video, we are going to compare the HVAC and the HVDC system using all these parameters. So for sure, the video is really going to be interesting and make sure you watch it till the end. Hey there, welcome on the channel. If you are new here, my name is Gaurav J. On this channel, I simplify electrical engineering. So if you are interested in learning such interesting topics in the easiest way, then make sure you subscribe to the channel with bell notification icon turned on because there is a lot of content available on the channel that will for sure help you. And there is also a lot many content that is going to come up in the coming days. So for sure, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now coming back to our topic today that is high voltage AC versus high voltage DC transmission of the power. Let us start with uh, the first parameter that we have that is transmission between the two different frequencies. Now let's imagine I have a country A uh, which is operating at 50 Hertz and I have the additional power. I have some surplus of the power which I want to sell to maybe let's say my neighboring countries. But the neighboring country that I have, country B, is operating at 60 Hertz. So for sure, I cannot connect these two different power system using the high voltage AC transmission because one of the fundamental requirement of connecting two different power system is to have identical frequency. In this case, both the frequencies are different. One is 50 Hertz, another one is 60 Hertz. So with HVAC, this connection is not possible. But when we use the high voltage direct current transmission here, then that connection is possible because in HVDC, there is no concept of frequency. So what I will do, I will use a converter station here, which will convert my incoming AC into DC. I will transmit power to the country B and then at there, I will convert that into AC again. And in that way, I'm connecting the two different power system of two different frequencies together. That is only possible using the high voltage direct current and not possible with the HVAC. So moving on, let's talk about the power transfer capacity and transmission distance. Now, when we say AC or alternating current, that there are two terms that are inevitable, inductance and capacitance. These two things plays a very crucial role in the complete AC system. And of course, the transmission line is also facing the same issue. Now, Because of these two things, there is a limitation on the capacity of the power transmission and also the distance at which we can transmit the power. There is a limitation because of the inductive and capacitive element of the line. There are losses with increase in the distance of the line and hence you cannot build a long transmission line, let's say 2000 kilometer, 3000 kilometer long transmission line that is not possible in HVAC. And there is limitation of the power transfer capacity as well because of the heating issue and there are other issues as well. But when we talk about the high voltage direct current, there is no concept called as the capacitance or inductance in HVDC. There is only resistance, the Ohm's law in the direct current transmission. And hence, technically, there is no limitation on how much capacity of power we can transmit and how long we can transmit that power. There are already HVDC transmission lines available, which is transmitting power at 1000, 2000 kilometer long without any issue, right? And this problem of uh, the capacitance and inductance becomes more and more critical when we talk about the cables in HVAC. In transmission lines, over a transmission line, this is still a problem, but not to a very high value. But in the cables, this problem increases to a significantly high value. And in that case, HVDC can be the savior. Moving on, let's talk about the conductor diameter that we need in both the system. Now in alternating current, uh, when current passes through the conductor, the current will not utilize the complete conductor. 
the current will tend to flow through the skin of the conductor or to the surface of the conductor. You can see one example on your screen. The current is flowing from the border of the conductor or the surface of the conductor. This is because of the effect called as skin effect. And this skin effect is directly proportional to the frequency. So if frequency increases, the skin effect increases and the current will concentrate more and more towards the skin of the conductor. But as the frequency decreases, uh, the skin effect also decreases and the current will start utilizing all the available conductor. So for sure, when we talk about high voltage AC transmission, wherein the frequency is present, the skin effect will also be there. So to transmit the same amount of power, I will need large diameter conductor for HVAC system and the small diameter conductor for HVDC system. Why? Because in DC system, there is no concept of frequency. So my current will be utilizing all the available uh, conductor and it will not concentrate on the skin of the conductor or the surface of the conductor. So to transmit the similar amount of power, I will need a large diameter conductor for HVAC and a small diameter conductor in HVDC. So conductor cost will vary in this scenario. Moving on to the next parameter that is the system structure. So in HVAC system, we have a very simple structure. So we have power plants which generate electricity at lower voltage. Then that lower voltage is stepped up using the step up transformer and then the transmission happens. That's the simple and plain setup that we have for HVAC. But when we talk about HVDC, uh, the setup is very complicated. So when we get the power, the HVAC power, we first need to convert that and for that we use converter stations and using that we convert AC into DC, then that is transmitted and then again we have a converter station which will convert the DC into AC and then that will be connected to the transmission towers, AC transmission towers that we have. So for sure, uh, this system is very, very complicated structure wise when we compare it with the HV. AC. Now I have talked about uh, this particular system, the introduction part of HVDC. If you are interested, you can watch that video. I'll provide a link for that down in the description. So for sure, the HVDC system is much more complicated and because of this converter station, the overall cost of the HVDC also increases. Now let us talk about the cost part. So initial cost, the investment for HVAC, including the substation, uh, and the other repair equipment, the HVAC cost is much, much lower when we compare it with the HVDC. The cost of HVDC is significantly high because we need to have the converter stations. And sometimes if we use the current source conversion methodology, then we also need to use the reactive power compensation devices and AC harmonic filters. So that will also add to the cost of the HVDC project. So initial investment for HVDC is huge when we compare it with the HVAC. And when we talk about the cost, a concept called the break even distance was introduced. So this is the methodology to identify or understand at what distance uh, the cost of HVAC and HVDC will become equal. That is the break even distance. So you have to calculate that and then you can arrive at some solution whether to go with HVDC or it is better to stick with the HVAC. But once you cross that uh, break even distance, then HVDC becomes a economical option than HVAC in some cases. So that study is judiciously done and then the decision is taken accordingly. Then the next parameter that we have is the power flow direction. So in HVAC, the power only flow in one direction from source to the destination. But in HVDC, if we are using the back to back methodology, then the bi-directional power flow is possible. And what do I mean by that? Let us understand. So here is one example that you can see on your screen. We have a back-to-back -back HVDC system used here. So what I can do is I can transmit the power from this AC system to this AC system very easily. 
and what i can do as well is i can also transmit power from this ac system to this ac system as well using the existing infrastructure existing system that i have so the power flow can happen bi-directional at once so either i can transmit power from this to this or this to this that bi-directional uh, power flow is possible only in case of hvdc and not in case of hvac then moving on the very obvious things uh, the losses in hvac the losses the transmission losses is very very high hvdc the losses are low because as we talked about the in hvdc the only parameter that plays is uh, the resistance and there is no inductance and uh, capacitance present so the losses of hvdc is very very low the problem with hvac as well as length line increases the losses also increases but with hvdc that remains constant so even if you increase the line let's say by 50 60 kilometers uh, the losses will remain the same but additionally in hvdc there are some losses that happens in the converter station but overall the losses of hvdc is much lower compared to the hvac then moving on to the tower design part so hvac tower is a bulky tower because we need to carry three conductors so you can see on the left hand side we have a double circuit um, tower design here the tower is for sure bulky and for hvac towers we will need a uh, high amount of steel but if we compare it with the hvdc tower we only need a tower which will carry two conductors so the design of tower becomes much more simpler than the hvac and the footprint that the hvdc tower needs that means the land it needs is also very very small compared to the ac tower so it it adds to the environmental friendly aspect because it uses less less steel and also the less land so environmentally the hvdc is advantageous over the hvac so those were some of the parameters which we talked about to compare the uh, hvac and hvdc now let us quickly summarize what we have talked so far uh, so we talked about the different parameters we started with the connection between the two different frequency that is not possible in hvac but it is possible with hvdc because there is no frequency concept in hvdc there is a, a transmission limitation in hvac but no limitation for hvdc conductor diameter we need a thick conductor for hvac because of the skin effect and since the skin effect is absent in hvdc the wires can be thin the conductors can be thin the system structure is simple for hvac but it gets complicated when we go towards the hvdc the capital cost for hvac is low but for hvdc is very very high but the concept of break even distance makes the calculation and at a certain distance above a certain distance uh, the hvdc can become the economical solution losses of course it is high in hvac and low in the hvdc the tower design uh, is bulky for hvac and it is much more simplified for the hvdc design and environmentally hvdc also gets more points than the hvac system clear so that was uh, the comparison between hvac and hvdc i hope you found the video helpful if you did then do like the video and do let me know your thoughts about it via the comment and if you find my youtube video helpful then for sure you will also love the different courses that i have created on the different topics of electrical engineering you can definitely go and check it out on www.theelectricalguy.in i'll provide link also for that down in the description do check it out so thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next one with another interesting video but till then keep watching keep learning